What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to another tutorial in which we create moving platforms. In order to do the tutorial I have added in two sprites. One of them is a little bigger and one of them is a little smaller. Again, if you want to have the textures, then go to Assets on the GitHub repository Textures and there you have the PNG file. We start off in the Assets and we need to add in both of our sprites. I just call them Sprite Solid 1 and Sprite Solid 2 and then we go down to the Get Sprite function at the very bottom and add the two in and I also would like to refer factor this a little bit. Then on top of that I would like to rename the sprite size to actual size because we already index or we already have sprite.size and that should already tell us what we have. So go up here to the sprite and then rename this to size. If everything worked then everything should be updated but you have to probably check the rendering interface if it actually did uh, because for some reason it doesn't do that. Here's code guys. So over here change to the size instead of si sprite size. Okay, now that we have this, I want you to switch over to the game.h file because we are going to add in what we call solids. If you remember from the article, solids are structures that can move and no matter what happens in the game, they will always be able to move. They don't test for collision detection at all. The only thing that they do is when the player is on top of a solid, they will move the player together with itself. And uh, when it's pushing the player towards something where they shouldn't be then the player will be destroyed and that is what we're going to implement uh, as well as when the player stands on a solid or a moving platform they will be able to inherit the speed of that platform to jump further so in order to do that we need a new vector 2 on the player that is called solid speed and this solid speed is something that the solids will give to the player when the player is standing on top of them for example mostly on top because we are not hanging to the sides or something a solid will have a sprite a position of where it is currently in the game and then the previous position that we need for our interpolated rendering right the fixed update loop then instead of having a locally scoped remainder like on the player this is basically how much floating point fraction we have to move um we need to store that on the solid that's basically the same thing as the player and then a solid will have a speed and i'll get to that speed in a second when we actually create one and then below here you can see that a solid has keyframes this is basically the positions that the solid will move towards and by default to make it a little bit easier to program i decided that we can have at most two keyframes which means that the solid will move between the two keyframes at all times the next thing is to actually add the solid to the game and in order to do that we switch over to the game.c++ file and then we go into the simulate function below the update player so switch to the local scope here and then below that we're going to or i'm going to paste in the update solids function which is big and it requires a lot of time to explain updating solids means we have to index into solids so in the game.h file it is not enough to just create a solid here we also have to add an array of solids and i decided to have at most 20. if you want you can have more, um, but for now this should be enough. And then you can this can always be extended. Okay, now that we have the array of solids in the game, uh, we switch over to back to the CPP file. And then let's go over this one by one. First, we have to get a reference to the player. And the reason for that is because we have to impact the solid speed of the player. Whenever the player is standing on top of a solid, I want the solid to inherit the speed to the player. And we have to reset this every frame because the player could be disconnecting from the solid and then we don't want to impact the speed ever again. So we go over all of the solids, uh, we get a reference to the solid, and then we set the previous position to the current position of the solid, because we're going to change it now. You know, this has to do with the interpolated rendering, as I told you before. Then we need to be able to tell, well, what is the rectangle of the solid? What is our collision box, our axis aligned bonding box? And so that is the first thing that I want to implement right above the simulate function. So we scroll up here, and then below the get style rect function, we add the get solid rect function it takes in a solid of course first and then it gets us based on the solid sprite id the sprite and then it creates us a bounding box based on the solid's center position minus the sprite size in half and then in sprite size because we are going to draw the solid around a center and therefore we also have to create this collision box around the center and uh, you might have noticed that we have an error here because we do not have an operator division by two and so in order to fix that i would like to go into the schnitzel lib 
into the iVector2 structure. And then over here, I'm going to add in more operators that we will need now. We need to be able to do minus equals, which basically says that, okay, we take in an int value. We take our x minus the value or y minus the value, and then we return the reference to this vector. And the same thing happens in plus equals. And the same thing is true for the operator on division. We return a vector2 with x divided by the scalar and y divided by the scalar. We need those in order to calculate the positions of the solids properly. So now we can switch back to the game.cpp file and then go down in the simulate function to where we update the solids. Now that we have the rectangle of the solid, I want to make it one pixel bigger around itself. And the reason for that is if the player is standing or touching the solid, right next to each other they don't collide the the only time the collision happens is when they are actually one pixel inside of each other and so in order to do that i have to pretend that the solid is one pixel bigger just so i know that the player is currently standing or touching the solid on each side the next interesting thing is the keyframe of the solid basically that indexes into if we go back to the game.h that indexes into our keyframes it basically means that this is the position that we are currently sitting at or this is where we are currently coming from and we want to move into the next keyframe uh, that way we can keep track of moving back and forth so we take our current keyframe index and plus that by one to get the next one and then we make sure that we loop back around by moduloing by the count of keyframes now that we have the current and the next keyframe we know where to move which basically means we do the normal move x function we store the remainder of our speed then i think it's easier if i just show you how we can add these solids to the game in order to continue from here i would like to switch to the update function of the game and where we have the initialization part below where we add the camera i want to add a solid section in which we create solids and then add them to the solids array these are hand placed so we will not have an editor where to place them this is not unity unfortunately we would actually have to code an editor for this uh, but this is also fine and you might have noticed that on the keyframes or generally on the position i'm trying to stick to a multiple of eight but you don't have to so the first solid has a sprite solid id of one and then two keyframes it goes from two times eight to ten times eight on the x-axis and then from eight times ten to eight times ten on the y-axis basically it will only move in x direction and this is one of the limitations of the system i have not tested what happens when you move in x and in y direction at the same time if you want to implement that feel free that could be a great challenge for you once i'm done explaining the code maybe you find an idea on how you could do that could be a cool idea so yeah i also supply the position which corresponds to the first keyframe position and then you can see this solid speed on x right here basically what that means is we are moving in x direction by 50 pixels per second and this is a positive value which basically means our speed is 50 pixels per second whether we move to the left or whether we move to the right or invert it for you it doesn't matter our speed is always 50 pixels per second and then up at the very top where we add uh, where we have added in the solids update loop we will track where we have to move by taking in the current keyframe and the next keyframe and the distance between them so if our current keyframe is right here and then our next keyframe is right here then our distance from here to here will be positive or our sign our move sign but if our current keyframe is right here and the next keyframe is right here then we have to go negative i just noticed this one is not used anymore so just get rid of this it will most likely be in move y as well yeah so don't don't type this in this is an old one that i used before the new one is the tile collision here okay so now that we have our move sign let's continue from here you might have noticed the auto move solid x this is another lambda function that we define here and then at the very bottom below that we invoke the function and then inside the function what we do is while we are moving in x direction we want to get the rectangle of our player and then this is a simple act to know if we are standing on top of a solid or not the position is at the top and then the size of the rectangle goes down this would be aligning with our solid perfectly which means no collision since we go one pixel higher in the solid to track for collision then we also have to take this one pixel into account when checking whether we are on top of the solid or not and so this is how we are checking this we take this minus one that we at the top uh, did for the solid rect as well and then if we are standing on top this is interesting later because then it will allow us to move the character to the left and to the right basically what this allows us to do is push the player when we are on top of a platform to the side but not kill him right out when the solid is moving us right and this would only happen if 
for example the character died right now if we are standing on top of a platform and there's room to move the player the first thing we do in the move loop after we're getting all of this we move the solid by one pixel and then we are checking whether we are colliding with the player or not and if we are colliding with the player then we move the rectangle of the player by one position and we assign the speed of the solid to the player but at a discount i would say <laughs> And the reason why this is a discount is because if we add 50 speed to the player, the player by default has a movement speed of 2 pixels per frame. Then he would just rocket out of there, no cap. And that makes no sense. So dividing by 20 seemed to be the most sane value, but you can tweak this around as well uh, if it doesn't suit your needs. And then we want to check, after we have moved the player, uh, are we colliding with tiles? And so basically we do the same thing as in the tile loop for when we move the player we get the player's grid position we loop over the nearby grid tiles we get the tiles we check whether we are colliding and if we are colliding then we set the tile collision to true and for now this doesn't say very much when we are setting this to true basically what happens is we are moving the rectangle and we are basically testing can we move this player on x direction to the left or to the right if we can't because we are colliding then we can't actually move the player so that is the case in which we are standing on top of the, and then the platform is basically pushing against the tile and it's moving the player to the side or well, it's not moving the player at all basically so otherwise we would just penetrate into the tiles and die and so but if we are not standing on top that is basically the part where the player gets squished between our solid and tiles then we want to for now i'm just going to spawn him in the world at a different position again so basically this means he's dying you know so that would be death also can you please get rid of this if move sign greater than one greater than zero this is a debug thing that shouldn't be in here sorry about that okay now that we have successfully checked for collision on the player and uh, maybe we haven't found any collision after moving the rectangle this is where we can actually move the player and that will make it so that whenever the player is colliding with a solid they will be transported together with the solid's movement okay and then further down below the loop we actually move the solid because inside the loop we have only moved the rectangle of the solid we move the rectangle of the solid first and then we move the solid then we obviously get one pixel less to move in the loop and this is where it gets interesting. After we are moving in X direction, and this is the reason why I don't do two-dimensional movement, when the solid's position reaches the keyframe's position, the next keyframe's position in X coordinate, we have just entered the correct position to go to the next one back. But if we have the same thing happening in Y coordinate and we are one off the Y coordinate but we have reached the X position, we will already start traveling to the next keyframe while we haven't actually reached the y coordinate yet and uh, it is a little bit more difficult this way which is why i don't do it i just allow one directional movement which means okay we check for the x position of the next keyframe have we reached that yet then we set the keyframe index to the next keyframe and then we increase the next keyframe by one and do the same looping with the modular operator and this is basically how you can move the solid in x direction it is a simple almost a simple repeat of the player's move x but it's slightly different which is why it isn't its own function and so yeah we do almost exactly the same thing in the y direction the only difference is that we don't have to check whether the player actually has to move or not because we will always move the player and if the player is moved into a tile then we destroy him on collision right here okay and now that we have the move x and move y function of the solids there's one last thing that we have to add to the player actually whenever the player moves we are not able to go and collide with solids and we have to add that in otherwise the player could just move through the solids and be done with it so whenever we are checking through the local tiles in move x for example for the player we also have to add an exception to test for the solids testing collision against the solids is straightforward we loop over all of the solids we get the reference to the solids we get the rectangle of the solids and then we check whether we are colliding or not if we are colliding we set the speed of x to zero and we return that is basically the same thing that we do here and now that we have move x we also need to do move y and there we have to basically duplicate this part right here so right above this we add in the collision test against the solids as well so basically we loop over all of the solids check for collision and if we collide then we set the speed to zero or if the speed is greater than zero then we are setting ourselves to being grounded there's one last thing that we have to do after updating all of the solids of course we have to draw them right now we are not drawing them at all we are just changing their positions in the simulation loop so that means we have to go down into update game and then below that where we 
draw everything below the interpolated delta time this is where we draw the solids that's very simple as well we just loop over all of the solids lerp between the previous and the current position using the delta time and then we draw the sprite at that position now when we start the game we should already be able to land on a solid when we press our w key which will spawn us on the top left the only thing that is left to do is to actually use the speed when jumping because you might have noticed when i'm trying to jump it will still always use my normal jump speed even though i'm actually going to the right or the solid is going to the right as well as me and in order to do that we have to switch back to the game and then when we jump with the player this is where we want to assign or use the solid speed as well so right in the update player section when we are jumping we have to make use of the solid speed when we jump the player's speed gets increased by the solid speed and the player's y speed also gets increased by the solid speed so very 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 simple now when we move on the platform and we jump we can see that we are actually jumping higher than before or further than before now we can actually do something cool we add in the bottom so we can't fall down now you might be able to see here i'm actually getting pushed to the side so this is what i wanted i don't want to be squashed here and we can jump to the side we can jump on this guy and then at the very top we can jump very high as well to give us some more boosts and so yeah you can already with this create a very interesting level and if this one squashes us we will start right here at the very bottom this is the death basically spawns us in the middle on x and in the middle on y or somewhat in the middle actually this one spawns us in a different position so let's just unify this when we die i would like to be spawned in the middle on x and basically at the very bottom minus 24 pixels a little bit higher and this is everything for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please leave a like and subscribe it really means a lot to me and in the next tutorial i would like to add in sound so stay tuned for that until the next one peace And this was everything for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. And I'll see you all in the next one in which we create... What are we creating? <laughs> loading? Yeah, I'm loading right now. Um...